I know it sounds gimmicky, the number one destroyer of fat burning body heat. But as weird as it sounds, it's real. Our body produces heat and that is a good way of burning fat. We dissipate calories as heat through what is called brown fat. And I don't need to go into exquisite detail there, but there is something that stands in the way of our body producing this brown fat or producing this heat. And it's something that we could get rid of pretty easily. And if we change our diet and do little things, we can have a big impact. Now, full disclaimer, when you look at the research with brown adipose tissue and uncoupling proteins and this whole body heat thing, it's newer research. So although there are human model studies, we're seeing a lot of rodent model stuff. But if you're like me and you try to look around a corner that you know is there, but you don't know what's around it yet, you have to kind of look at this rodent model data and apply it to yourself. So first there was a study published in Cell Reports that took a look at mice and it found that when these mice were exposed to high levels of glucose, like as if they had way too many carbohydrates, it affected their cells in such a way that they were unable to dissipate energy as heat. So in a human, what we look at is when we consume calories, some of these calories end up through an inefficiency in our system getting dissipated as heat. Okay, it's through a mitochondrial dysfunction that is on purpose. Okay, so although it seems weird, it's like a dysfunction that's there on purpose. So basically, when we consume calories, a certain percentage are just gonna get emitted as heat to help keep us warm. And we're in a cold situation, that's gonna increase. Well, we notice if glucose is too high, like we've seen in these mice, that it affects the ability to dissipate heat which means it's decreasing the effectiveness of our brown adipose tissue. So does this mean stay away from carbs? Carbs are the enemy, carbs are the worst. No, first of all, this is excess. So if glucose is too high, so if you're consuming too many carbs, it impedes this, and we don't wanna impede this. But there's also really good news. How should you eat? Well, there was a study published in IUMB Life that was very fascinating. It was a rodent model study, again, had rodents eat their typical rodent chow, whatever that is, okay, and they had another group consume a ketogenic diet for one month. Results were unreal. Brown adipose tissue, mitochondrial size, increased 60% in the mice that did a keto diet. Okay, they had more brown fat activation. They were able to emit more heat from their body fat, from their actual brown fat, and it increased the protein, uncoupling protein, that dissipates the heat itself, it increased that 3x. So what does that mean? Essentially, more than a 3x increase in their ability to dissipate excess calories as heat. So what does this mean to you? How do you apply this? How do you actually turn more of your body fat into heat? Well, there's a few simple things that you can do. Okay, for one, from a dietary perspective, periodically doing low carb. It seems as though it's not necessarily being on a ketogenic diet or following a ketogenic lifestyle that has the impact. The more that we look at it, it's more like it's temporary absence of carbohydrates or temporary restriction of carbohydrates. Now, what we have to look at is the kind of fats that might help support cellular membranes and insulin sensitivity as well. So when you do go low carb, I recommend that you do this maybe three days per week or if you wanna go full on, please, by all means, go for it. I think it's great, but I know not everyone watching this video wants to do full-blown keto. But if you restrict your carbs, maybe three days per week, you could get some huge effect because it seems like that might be all it takes. But the fats you may wanna add in, you may wanna add things like avocados. You're gonna to wanna to add things like perhaps unrefined coconut oil. You're gonna to wanna to add things like ghee. You're gonna to wanna to add things like uh, obviously really good olive oil, but you're also gonna to wanna to add things like macadamia nuts. These are all foods that really support mitochondrial function and overall insulin sensitivity. I popped a link down below for House of Macadamia if you want a good source of macadamia nuts. They're a sponsor on this channel. Huge, huge fan of them. That link down below saves you 20% off whatever you want from them. So if you're trying to get your macadamia nut content up, but you don't wanna just eat macadamia nuts, they have macadamia nut bars where the first ingredient is macadamia nuts. So highly recommend you check them out. Oh, and I almost forgot a free 20 ounce bottle of fresh cold pressed macadamia nut oil. We're talking nice omega-7, low omega-6, higher omega-3 macadamia nut oil 
free, literally free, as long as you're using that link down below and using that 20% off discount link to buy something else through House of Macadamia. So that link's down below, all harvested in South Africa and then packaged and processed less than an hour from where they grow it. So that link down below for 20% off. So in order to kind of activate this brown fat, like you think you have to go full-blown keto or you have to fast and things like that. No, it's all about periodic, like dipping your toe in the water with these things. I've used this analogy before. If you're trying to increase your amount of brown fat or decrease the amount of something that stands in the way of brown fat, you wouldn't go out and run a full marathon tomorrow because you decided you wanted to do a marathon. You'd slowly incorporate little things, right? It's all about incorporating these stressors little bits at a time. We've also seen in other studies that mice that are fasting have a change in their microbiome that allows them to form more brown fat. So maybe you do keto three days per week just for the heck of it. But then maybe two days per week, you do some intermittent fasting and you do cardio or a workout in your early stage of your day when you're fasted. You get what I'm saying? Like you can do all these little different things, right? Another thing that we've seen in the research recently is that melatonin can help increase this brown fat production. So having some tart cherry juice before bed can help you out with this. It can make a very big difference when it comes down to how much melatonin you produce. The melatonin then binds to an MT1 receptor in your brain, which downstream causes an effect for you to be able to have more brown fat. So the number one destroyer of your fat burning body heat is excess carbohydrates, and inactivity, especially in tandem, and living in climate-controlled environments where you're always warm and toasty. Occasionally get cold, it doesn't have to be a cold plunge. Occasionally restrict carbohydrates, occasionally fast, and do hard things aerobically. This will stop the quote-unquote destroyer of fat-burning body heat right in its tracks because you'll always be able to supersede it with your activity and your lifestyle choices. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.